Tony, can I tell them uh, our disagreement? Yes. <laughs> I thought you'd be interested because yes, we have very. Yes, no, it's, it's important. <laughs> you'd have. Uh, it, it may be interesting for you. So, so I, I personally don't think that pluralism, religious pluralism, or a religiously pluralist position, which says all faiths are equally true and equally uh, valid ways of accessing the divine, I don't think it's intellectually coherent. I think it's muddled. Um, so, so that's that's one <laughs> uh, thing, and we we can we can discuss that. And I'm I'm prepared to. When you say intellectually, you don't mind me. I, I <laughs> <laughs> not not that that is in it. Ed. But when you say intellectually muddled, I I, I mean, mean as opposed to just not something you agree with, as it were. Well, uh, <laughs> no, you know what I mean. <laughs> because well, I disagree. You could believe that all. I mean, it's not as a matter of fact what I believe, but obviously you could believe that all faiths. You could believe that, but I don't think uh, I don't think it's a, it's a coherent. Uh, it's right, not a coherent okay. position. And therefore, I think it's a wrong position. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can put it. Uh, I could put it uh, strongly. Uh, uh, like, and partly I believe because uh, uh, religious traditions make truth claims, and those truth claims are not compatible often. Uh, and uh, um, so, the second thing, I, I think something like a, a soft exclusivism is actually the, the most compelling uh, position. Uh, two, I don't think that non-exclusivism of faiths is the most important aspect in their contribution to, to peace. I think that commitment to respect the dignity fundamental dignity of each person, and commitment to care for another person, whether your faith is exclusive or non-exclusive, is more important for the peace processes than whether you think that that person's belief system is true uh, or, or not. Right, but I would, I, would, I, I would agree with that, but I would say, I would say that but aren't you more likely, the less the less vehement your ex ex exclusivity, or uh, well, you know what I mean, the more vehement your view that your religion is exclusive, is that not m more likely to mean that you, you, you don't regard those things as important? Right. There, there, are, there are kinds of exclusivisms, uh, like in Northern Ireland. Protestants of Nor Northern Ireland are a very good example. Uh, it was exclusivism which said, uh, basically, I think in simple terms, God loves only us. Uh, God doesn't love the nasty Catholics, right? Mm -hmm. They're papists and so forth. Uh, they're out of the purview of God's love. I remember I was there when I was talking about Christ's universal love, for instance, and their hands went up in the air and they said, no, that's not true. <laughs> God's love is limited to a certain crowd of folks and it doesn't apply to the Catholics. <laughs> now, if you have that view, exclusivist view, I think that that's really pernicious and completely unacceptable, and it undermines reconciliation process totally and fosters violence. But if you have exclusivist faith, which says, I ought to love every person because God loves every person, I ought to respect every person because everyone is made in the image of God, then exclusivity will not be in conflict mm -hmm. with peace process. No, and I would, <laughs> I would agree with that. It's just that I think that that. Sorry, let me come in. Can I just? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. That's on good. the uh, the question of pluralism as coherent. Yeah. Uh, my own view is that the truth claims are all untestable by mortal man or woman, and that having ha accepting that fact is for me a basis for pluralism which says they are all credible and indistinguishable at an ultimate <laughs> epistemological level as, as faiths, as ways of relating to God. Yeah, I, I, and I, my, my conclusion is, uh, would be that they're not strictly testable because faiths are different things than kind of empirical. Uh, faith statements are different kinds of statements than empirical statements. But I wouldn't say for that reason that I cannot affirm them as truth claims and therefore have to say there are 15 truth claims that are different and all are equally true because I can't test any one of them. 
What instead I say, because of this limited ability to test, is that I need to hold and have to hold religious convictions with uh, a certain provisionality, with a certain sense of the mystery beyond, which simply says my thing that I think is true is such that I cannot assert my knowledge as absolute about something that is inherently beyond the capacity of human beings fully to grasp. 